بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا چینل ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ اے کنجینیٹل انومیلی انوالونگ دا لیرنکس اینڈ دس از کالڈ لرنگو ملیشیا دس از موسٹ کامن کنجینیٹل انومیلی آف دا لیرنکس There are so many congenital anomalies like vocal cord paralysis, subglottic stenosis, then there can be subglottic hemangioma, etc. The most common congenital anomaly of the larynx is called laryngomalacia. It is characterized by partial or complete collapse of the supraglottic structures, especially on inspiration. Laryngomalacia is a congenital softening of the tissues of the larynx above the vocal cords and this is the most common cause of noisy breathing which we call as strider during infancy. So this is the most common congenital anomaly of the larynx and at the same time it is the most common cause of congenital strider. The laryngeal structures they are malformed, floppy, causing the tissues to fall over the airway opening and partially blocking it. Malaysia is a Greek word which means softening and Jackson in 1942 described it. As I just mentioned, most common cause of congenital strider. This condition it manifests at birth or soon after and usually disappears by two years of age. So there is a natural resolution of the disease till two years of age. There is soft flabby laryngeal tissues, thin laryngeal cartilages and loose redundant mucosa of the larynx. Its exact etiology is unknown but there are certain theories because epiglottis is derived from third and fourth branchial arches. So due to overgrowth of the third, it results in elongation of the structures and observed laryngomalacia. But histological studies of normal and abnormal cartilages have not demonstrated any difference. Then another theory is that it can be due to relaxation or a lack of muscle tone in the airway or there may be insufficient or delayed calcium deposition or the part of the nervous system which gives tone to the airway is most likely underdeveloped. Gastroesophageal reflux is considered as an important factor in the etiological role in laryngomalacia. Immature neuromuscular control may be responsible for the retinoid prolapse observed in the laryngomalacia. So it is seen in a child's airway during microlaryngoscopy which is a precise type of the surgery used in diagnosis and removal of various lesions of the vocal cords to restore a normal voice. It is equally in male and female child children. The differentiating feature is that cry is normal in such babies because the disease is involving the supraglottic region. So vocal cords are spared. So cry is normal and this will differentiate it from the pathologies which will be involving the glottis of the baby. For example, vocal cord paralysis or vocal cord polyp or vocal cord cyst in which the cry will be abnormal. Here the cry is normal. Then the strider will be inspiratory strider. Inspiratory strider which will be high pitched, crowing, fluttering like and it will date back within few days soon after birth. And whenever upper respiratory tract infection is there, it increases it. When the baby is in supine position or during feeding or even when the baby cries, it worsens the strider. But 
this strider it improves in prone position because during supine position when the air is flowing through it sucks in the laryngeal framework and narrows the airway so strider worsens while in prone position it improves the strider so first noticed within few days of birth this noisy breathing it tends to increase in severity within first 8 months maximum is between 9 to 12 months and then the severity of the disease starts decreasing and as i just mentioned till the 2 years of age it spontaneously resolves in 90% of the cases usually it is intermittent especially it is more worse during feeding and crying or sleeping in supine position if feeding difficulties are more then of course it will lead to failure to thrive but good thing is that in majority of the cases rarely there is respiratory distress so history is very suggestive of and to confirm it we can go for video laryngoscopy or flexible nasal laryngoscopy which will show us a omega shaped epiglottis short airy epiglottic folds which prolapse inwards and prominent retinoids with loose mucosa which move it inwards so these are the typical findings on endoscopy for the cases of laryngomalacia and sometimes it is difficult to see the vocal cords because so much narrowing of the airway in supraglottis that we would not be able to see the vocal cords properly this is how it can look like here you can see this is the epiglottis which is omega shaped and so much narrow lumen of the airway is there prominent retinoids which are inwardly displaced and very short airy epiglottic folds actually this short airy epiglottic folds have turned this epiglottis inwards into this omega shaped this is from mild to severe form here you can see this is omega shaped small airy epiglottic folds but still some airway is there it is a bit more serious it is more severe form here we cannot see the vocal cords and here almost complete lumen is completely occluded it is considered a benign transient cause of inspiratory strider and it is characterized by collapse of retinoids epiglottis and airy epiglottic folds during inspiratory phase especially clinical diagnosis comprises of identifying three anatomic abnormalities one is flaccid omega shaped epiglottis second is poorly supported retinoids which lead to their prolapse during inspiration and short airy epiglottic folds so diagnosis is on endoscopy we will see a tall tubular inrolled epiglottis which is omega shaped as you can see in the picture omega shaped epiglottis then very small airy epiglottic folds prominent retinoid cartilages and whole supraglottis is deepened and narrowed and even we could not see the true vocal cords this is the normal airway and this is the epiglottis and this is the portion of the larynx while in laryngomalacia the epiglottis is pushed folding over so that the airway is being narrowed at this particular point and the whole larynx is very soft especially in supraglottic region so according to the abnormalities different types of laryngomalacia have been mentioned type 1 is inward collapse of the airy epiglottic folds this this is the retinoid this is the epiglottis so these are the short airy epiglottic folds so inward collapse leading to this omega shaped epiglottis 
which is long tubular more prominent in this type 2 then anterior and medial collapse of this is anterior collapse this is medial collapse of the carniculate and cuneiform cartilages and in type 4 there is a posterior displacement of the epiglottis against posterior pharyngeal wall are downwards inferior collapse towards the vocal cords and type 5 is when you have very short epiglottic folds. So laryngomalacia according to the severity of the symptoms it can be mild moderate or severe in 99% of the infants with laryngomalacia they have mild or moderate laryngomalacia mild laryngomalacia there will be inspiratory strider but no significant airway obstruction or feeding difficulties or other symptoms associated with laryngomalacia. The noisy breathing that is strider of course it is annoying for the people around especially for the parents but it does not cause any other health care problems. And usually they outgrow this strider by one year to one and a half years of age. In moderate laryngomalacia, inspiratory strider is there. Along with that, there may be feeding difficulties leading to poor weight gain. Sometimes there may be choking on food due to aspiration of the food. Mild to moderate chest or neck retractions may be there. So some distress, respiratory distress is there, but not that much severe. Gastroesophageal reflux in such patients, if acid reaches the upper part of the esophagus and the larynx, that also can cause swelling of the floppy tissues which are present already there above the vocal cords, making the situation more worse. In severe laryngomalacia, of course, there will be feeding difficulties with poor weight gain. There will be chest and neck retractions during breathing. So respiratory difficulty is there which can lead to cyanosis even and sometimes there can be life-threatening apnea which can lead to heart or lung problems from chronic oxygen deprivation. Airway symptoms if severe enough to cause multiple visits to an emergency department or hospital and these 1% of the infants with laryngomalacia they have severe laryngomalacia and infants with severe laryngomalacia are the candidates for surgery. So more than 90% of the cases they usually resolve spontaneously by the age of two years. So only what we do require is just to reassure the parents about the prognosis that for the child is favorable but whenever they have got upper respiratory tract infection that should be treated judiciously in severe respiratory distress or when there is feeding difficulty leading to high thoracic negative pressure and that in return leads to gastroesophageal reflux disease with failure to thrive may need active intervention that is the surgery in such patients in emergency if respiratory distress is there we have to maintain the airway so to start with it can be endotracheal intubation in emergency later on that can be converted into temporary tracheostomy but as i told you it is required only one percent of the patients with laryngomalacia who are having severe laryngomalacia otherwise more than 90 percent of the patients they are having mild or moderate laryngomalacia so conservative management in most of the cases but in those one percent of the cases who have got severe laryngomalacia we have to go for endoscopic airy epiglottoplasty which is also called as supraglottoplasty 
this is now the surgical procedure of choice basically what we have to do is that we have to release those short epiglottic folds from the epiglottis and remove the redundant mucosa of the retinoids and if needed even cuneiform cartilages can be excised and ho whole of this procedure can be done either with carbon dioxide laser or we can use cold knife or microlaryngeal scissors can be used or microlaryngeal debriders can be used so these are the different surgical methods which can be used to do all this what is mentioned already so this is pre supraglottoplasty that this is a typical case of laryngomalacia in which there is omega shaped epiglottis short airy epiglottic folds inward collapse of these retinoid cartilages so this short airy epiglottic folds has been released from here redundant mucosa also removed and maybe along with that some cuneiform cartilages also removed and that then post operatively you can see now even true vocal cords are visible and the lumen of the airway in the supraglottis is restored so this is what it is supraglottoplasty which can be done by either carbon dioxide laser or cold knife or microlaryngeal scissors or micro debriders but the action or the surgery is the same methods or tools are different but still your child will grow out of it they say in more than 90% of the cases so if you find it beneficial for you please like and share it with your friends any comments or queries are welcome in comment section thank you very much for your listening and watching this video